So cervical cancer is one of the top cancers affecting women in India. The incidence of cervical cancer is to the tune of 18 per 100,000 women in India. I'm Dr. Kanika Badra Modi and I'm a consultant in gynecological oncology at Max Hospital, Saket. What is cervical cancer? Cervical cancer is basically cancer of the cervix. Cervix is the lower part of the uterus that connects it to the vagina. And a cancer of that part is called cervical cancer. So cervical cancer is essentially caused by HPV virus. HPV virus, the full form of which is human papilloma virus. So this virus affects a lot of women. But in some women, it causes a mutation at the DNA level, which takes about years and years when this virus cannot be cleared up by the immune system of the body. That is when over a prolonged period of time, say a latent period about 10 to 15 years, it can convert into cervical cancer. So there are multiple risk factors for cervical cancer, some of which are having early sexual activity, having multiple sexual partners, having a weakened immune system. That is, if you have any immunocompromised condition like HIV infection or you are on some medications which are known to weaken the immune system. All these are risk factors for cervical cancer. The other ones are even, you know, birth control pills. They change the flora of the vagina and the cervix that makes it prone for HPV infection to stay. Then other vaginal infections like, you know, STIs, sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea or chlamydia, they are known to have an association with HPV infection, leading to further development of cervical cancer. And another important association is with smoking. Smoking increases your risk of having cervical cancer. A. Quitting smoking. B. Practicing safe sex. That is using condoms in each sexual activity. Another way of preventing cervical cancer is by getting a regular test which is pap smear. Pap smear is a very basic cytological examination that needs to be done in a woman starting from the age of 21 years. It needs to be done every three yearly till the age of 30 years, followed by after the age of 30, it needs to be clubbed with an HPV testing in a woman and needs to be done every five years. So what happens is these uh, cytological tests, they pick up any abnormal cells that are there. That will make you treat the abnormality before cervical cancer develops. And another very important way to prevent cervical cancer from developing is to get an HPV vaccine. An HPV vaccine needs to be given to girls starting from the age of nine years. So between the age of nine to 15 years, only two doses need to be taken. And after the age of 15 years, three doses are recommended. They are recommended by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics and are included in the National Immunization Program as well and they are extremely safe. And we have various types of vaccines available which could either be quadrivalent or now even the nine valent or the nonavalent vaccine is also available. So there are essentially two types of cervical cancers which are the commoner histology. The most common, 80 to 85% is the squamous cell carcinoma and in about 10 to 15 percent, it is adenocarcinoma. And then there are some rarer histologies like neuroendocrine tumors as well. So the symptoms of cervical cancer, when should a woman suspect that she has cervical cancer? What are those abnormal symptoms that should raise a red flag as to one can have cervical cancer? So any abnormal bleeding, that is, it could be intermenstrual bleeding or most commonly postcoital bleeding, that is bleeding that occurs right after sex, is one of the major symptoms of cervical cancer. Or bleeding in a postmenopausal woman, that could also be a symptom of cervical cancer. Then profuse watery discharge is also one of the important symptoms of cervical cancer. And sometimes it could even present with a lower back pain or some vague symptoms. So you need to get in touch 
with a doctor if you have any of these symptoms. So cervical cancer, although there are so many perils about it, the one good thing about cervical cancer is that we can screen it. There is a long latent period in which there are abnormal cells that can be detected by a simple pap smear before it develops into cervical cancer. This pap smear is an essential way to screen away the abnormal cells before it develops into cancer. So how do we finally diagnose cervical cancer? If you have any of those symptoms and you go to your doctor, which is essentially a gynecologist or a gynecologist, then they would see a growth that is present on your cervix which needs to be biopsied. Biopsy is an essential component of making a diagnosis of cervical cancer and then identifying the subtype of cervical cancer. The other investigations could include, depending upon what the you know, staging is, it could include an imaging in the form of MRI or sometimes even a PET scan. So what is there to treat cervical cancer? Treatment of cervical cancer in the early stages, including stage 1 or early stages of stage 2 also, can be done with surgery. But in case the disease burden is high, that is the volume of the mass that is there in the cervix is high. So higher stages which would include sometimes bulky 1B3 and 2B onwards, it essentially includes a combination of chemo and radiation therapy. And surgery does not have to be done right away at the beginning. Then in case it is an advanced stage tumor with metastasis to other organs, sometimes we choose a palliative chemotherapy route as well. So as we discussed today, cervical cancer is one of the top most gynecological malignancies affecting women. But the good thing about cervical cancer is if we have the right knowledge, it is preventable to a large extent be it either by getting a pap smear or an HPV testing or giving HPV vaccines to younger girls, then there are certain risk factors which, you know, we can modify our lifestyle and practicing safe sex is one of them, which is going to further prevent our risk of having cervical cancer. Knowing about what are the symptoms of cervical cancer and going to the doctor at an appropriate time is also one of the ways through which we can A, prevent cervical cancer from developing and B, just detect it at an early stage where treatment results are absolutely curative.